Let's start with the Senate because we can get our arms around this a bit easier and we will likely know a bit sooner uh, than the House. Democrats have a very difficult map and the conventional wisdom is that we'll see an historic flipping uh, to opposite parties in both houses. Megan, is that how you see it? That is what it seems to be. Although, you know, particularly after this weekend's poll um, in Iowa that caught us a lot, many of us by surprise see, uh, showing Harris ahead. I am not willing to say anything definitively of, <laughs> at this point. But yes, it does seem the map has always been, the Senate map has always been in Republicans' favor. Democrats are defending a lot of seats and in states that Trump has won, um, particularly in Montana, where he's supposed to win by double digits. And you have John Tester trying to hold on there. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Tester seat, as well as the West Virginia seat, that is very likely to pit Pit, uh, flip Republican because Joe Manchin is retiring are really the only two pickups Republicans would need to take control and become the majority. But how much does the size of the majority ultimately matter, Megan, not just in the Senate, but the House as well? Sure. Well, in the Senate, you know, you need 60 votes to do most legislation. Uh, in a unified government, though, Democrats can get, or either party could get things through under what's called a reconciliation process. We saw that with the uh, the Biden climate law during the, for his first two years in office. Uh, but without that 60 vote majority, it gets things things get a little tricky, and and we haven't seen that since the Obama administration. Um, so the size of the majority, you know, parties always want more, um, but uh, but short of 60, you know, there, it, it does get things, it is complicated to get things done. In the House, um, it looks like whoever wins that majority will be a narrow one as well. It's only going to take four seats, um, four nationwide seats for Democrats to take the majority in the House. And it's looking pretty favorable for them at this moment. Let's talk about the House a bit more specifically. This is a beast to cover, Megan. You're going to be in your team uh, knee deep in all of this tomorrow night. The fact is, as we mentioned, not all uh, these seats are up for grabs or contested, at least. When we look at the way this will play out tomorrow, we might well have to wait for, and I'm assuming that you would agree, California uh, to come to fruition before we actually know which party controls the House. The big states of New York and California will have more to do with this than the swing states, for instance, that we're watching for president and Senate. Absolutely. So it's interesting. When you look at the House, you're really looking at about a tenth of the races that mm -hmm. are competitive. And if, and if you're looking at it sort of from East Coast to West Coast, you will ha we'll know early in the evening, we'll get some kind of sense as to which direction this is going or if it remains a toss-up with the with the polls coming out of New York, um, there are also competitive races in North Carolina and in Virginia. So that will give us an early indication. What I'm going to be watching really closely tomorrow night, though, is the heartland. Um, there are two House races in Iowa that look very good for Democrats. And then there is that blue dot district in mm. Omaha that Democrats are also seeking to flip. That could signal kind of which way this is going. Of course, we won't know anything for sure, most likely, until much later in the evening or perhaps days later. Um, it did take a few days in 2022 to call the House. So, you know, well, but I think that there might be a moment there sort of late in the evening uh, after those cl polls close in Iowa and Nebraska. Well, and then there's California to consider, which I think, Megan, is why we have to warn our audience about how long it could take uh, for ultimately the total tally of the House to come together. Just can you tell us quickly why California takes so long, aside from its geographic location, polls closing later in the evening? <laughs> Polls close later. It is um, there are five seats there. They they tend to count slowly. Um, we're expecting turnout to be very high. Um, they don't count the uh, the early vote uh, before election night. So all of this is going to just make it drag this out even longer. Um, and and I hate to tell you guys, but we might not even know until Alaska comes in um, <laughs> because there is a very competitive race there, uh, Mary Poltola's seat. So um, we'll see which way which way that one goes. So it's going to be a long night and it could potentially extend into Wednesday or Thursday before we even know the House. <laughs> As Joe said at the beginning, I think the most likely thing we're to know we're 
we will know Wednesday or Tuesday night, and this is by far guarantee, from a guarantee, but is control of the Senate.